What's up everyone, Coach Laxball here. I'm so excited, it's the fall. Beautiful temperatures, football, pumpkin spice latte. My wife said to do that one. And we've got a couple more months to get ready for the spring lacrosse season. So let's take advantage of it. Today, let's talk about the six things you can do to improve yourself so you're ready come springtime. Let's go. All right, so it's the fall. The first thing I want you to do is to play something. I don't care what it is. That's right, you heard me right. I don't care what it is. I want you playing something. Participate in some sort of athletic event. Football, soccer, cross country, lacrosse. There are plenty of things you can do, but it doesn't have to be lacrosse. Too many players get burnt out of playing the same sport all year round. Feel free to mix it up. It's good for you mentally. It's good for your muscle groups to try something a little bit different. Play something. Now, if you're playing lacrosse, it's not a bad thing. It's definitely gonna make you better, but make sure you're doing something. Number two on that list is attendance. And what I mean by that, I want you to attend your team's events. Now, if you're playing another sport as we just talked about, you may not be able to get to practices that are happening in the fall, but I want you to attend the other events, the other social activities that are maybe going on, the coaches meeting, whatever it is, make yourself present. And if you are playing another sport, let your coach know. Let them know, hey, I'm doing this in the fall, but I am absolutely committed. I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z while I'm doing that other sport, so I'm prepared for the spring lacrosse season. So definitely attend as many events as possible. You're not playing another sport, you better be at everything. Why? Because this is your chance to get some more individualized coaching. Not all players are able to be there. If you have the benefit of being able to be there, you are going to get a smaller group dynamic with your coach specifically. And a lot of times it's the head coach. You know, if you're at a smaller school, the head coach may be present and the assistant coaches won't be there. Here's your chance, especially as an upcoming freshman, whatever, here's your chance to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching with that individual, let them know who you are, know your personality, and now that you're there, you're busting your butt, you're working hard, you're helping pick up afterwards, you're doing the right, responsible things. If you are in attendance, you have so many fantastic benefits to you just by being there and then working hard, you're gonna get to know people, get to know the team. It's a fantastic thing to have the availability of a smaller group dynamic and more one-on-one -on -one time with your coach. Be there to make the team in the spring. Come on now, you know the next one, stick work. One of the best things you can do, of course, is going to be wall ball. If you're not sure exactly what you can do with wall ball, I'm gonna link you up to there. I'm gonna link you up to another video where I talked about wall ball and some of the big, most important things. I really ought to do a whole video on wall ball itself. That'll come sometime. The more you have the stick in your hand, the better the player you're going to be. One of the things I did as a head coach is I said, look, all of my players, I want you to get 50,000 touches, 50,000 passes, 50,000 shots. I don't care what it is. I want you throwing the ball 50,000 times. That's right, 50,000 times. If you actually do the math and you take that out over the weeks, you absolutely can do it. Doing a number of wall ball sessions a week, you know, two to three wall ball sessions a week at this time of year, you absolutely can get to that number, but it takes commitment. It takes dedication. That's what I wanna see out of a player in the fall, out of the winter. I wanna see you committed and working hard, getting to 50,000 passes, shots, whatever. If we even had shirts printed up, 50K club. It was a fantastic way to motivate our team to ensure everyone is working as hard as they can. So when they show up in the spring, I know they are 50,000 passes better than they were in the fall. Of course, we can't make this list without academics. Academics are important. The beautiful thing, and I mentioned it earlier, the beautiful thing about spring lacrosse is it's in the spring, the fall season, you have your opportunity to get your grades up to where they need to be. So let's focus on your education, focus on your studies, learn your new teachers that you now have, learn these new classes that you have, figure out what you need to do to make sure your grades are on point. You know as well as I do, your grades are important, especially if you wanna to go to college, if you wanna to go to the pros, if you wanna just get to high school and get a good grade. Your grades are important. Focus on them, especially in the fall, because it's kind of like a trial run. You do all the grades, the education, all of that important stuff without the lacrosse mixed in. Get it done now, so that way when it comes to the spring, you're set, you understand the expectations, you understand the work habits that you're gonna have to have outside of practice. It's a wonderful thing. Academics come first, make sure they come first. Work on them in the fall. The next thing you can do is simply just raise your IQ. Not just the academic IQ, but raise your IQ on the field. How do you do that? You watch tape. You watch the PLL, all right? Hopefully you watch them over the summer. Maybe you can watch some reruns over here in the, in the fall. Watch the PLL, pick out a specific player on the field that does your position and watch them. College, there's lots of college tapes out there that you can get access to. YouTube, YouTube's 
full of great content of individuals doing a really good job at their position. Look it up. See what they do. Mimic their dodges. That's one of the things I did when I was a kid is I tried to find old VHS tapes and try to figure out exactly how a really good player would dodge. What they would do off the ball. How they would get open. What they would do when going against the defense. There's lots of things you can learn simply by watching lacrosse. And if you can watch lacrosse with an educated person, ask them questions throughout it, even better for you. But watch lacrosse to help raise your IQ of what you should do in different scenarios on the field. If you're not sure where to start, reach out to your coach. Ask him or her, what are some of the things I need to work on? Ask for some of those old game tapes, some areas that you knew you could improve upon. Now you can watch them back and see exactly what you did and maybe what you should have done. Or you can watch players on YouTube, wherever, to see exactly what you should be doing because your coach has already suggested to you that's an area where you can improve. Raising your IQ in the fall is a fantastic use of this time. And lastly, and this is definitely one of the most important things, look, we're not in season. Stresses are not as high on your team. You need to be a great teammate. What does that mean, be a teammate? Well, I'll tell you what, some of the absolute best teams that I've been on, some of these best teams that I've been on back here, and reasons why we got some medals hanging is because they were great teams. They were all for each other. They were not about the individual. They got along very well. They were very cohesive groups. The best way to build that is in the fall. Start doing some sort of events. Maybe it's going bowling together. Uh, during COVID, come up with other ideas. You're going fishing together. I've seen them go fishing before. Uh, come up with different ideas, different things that you can do together as a team. Make sure you're safe. But do some things together as a team because when you do that, you continue to build those relationships. And the more you build those relationships, the more trust you have in your teammates. And when you have trust, it goes a long way on the field. So highly recommend being the best teammate you can be. Build that teammate relationship. The stronger the foundation of your team, the further you're gonna go in the spring, guaranteed. So there you go, there's the six things I want you to accomplish. Of course, of course, of course, I missed a big glaring one. But I didn't really miss it. You know, it's number seven-ish, asterisk. Strength and conditioning, absolutely. You all knew that coming into this video. Strength and conditioning is important. I think strength is maybe a little bit more important this time of year, because conditioning, definitely want to get ramped up in the winter time frame. But strength, now's a great time to build your strength. I'm not an expert when it comes to strength and conditioning. There are fantastic people out there, I'm sure in your local area, or reach out to your head coach. I'm sure they can link you up with someone that can give you a great strength and conditioning plan. But absolutely, that's something you should be doing. But you knew that kind of before this video. There's our six things. You know what to do. Take advantage of this opportunity. Championships are not won in the spring, they're won in this moment. Do your hard work, become a better player, become a better person. Spring's gonna be a lot more fun for you. Thanks for stopping by this week. As we say around here, don't forget the little things. If there's anything else, let me know.